Happy Valentine's Day, and in honor of the holiday of love, I'm talking about shipping and Ruby. This is a discussion and will most certainly contain spoilers through Volume 4. Now, because I don't want this to be an hour long, I'm limiting it to just 10 ships. So, here are some ground rules. 1. The pairing must have significant, meaningful screen time together. 2. There also needs to be some level of support either from the fanbase through fan art or fan fiction, or from the creators through character motivations and desires. 3. No incest. 4. No teacher student ships. And 5. No hero villain ships. So without further ado, let's start with the big guns. It's only fitting to start with the capital ship. Renora is a juggernaut of a ship. The only way this doesn't become canon is if they die or a friend turns out to be gay. They've been together for a long time. The only thing holding them back was fear of what comes after that. They need to just get over whatever fears they have and just kiss already. The way it started is excellent too. I hinted in my review for the episode that though they both were at the destruction of Kudayuri, it had a more negative impact on Rin. He lost his home, his family, but Nora? She had already lost those. The destruction of Kudo Yuri was a great day for her because she found Ren. For Ren, it was the end of the world, but for Nora, it was the beginning of hers. I don't think we need anything from before then. Nora, as we know her, didn't exist before that night. At the start of the series, they make a perfect comedy pair. Nora's exuberance plays off Ren's stoicism in a nice back and forth motion that adds a lot of comic relief where you wouldn't really expect it. And everyone, from the animators to Jeff Williams, has done everything they could to show just how strong their bond is. From Nora being the only one to make Rin smile, to him giving her subtle looks anytime she gets dreary. It's easy to say that they literally would not be able to function without each other. Nora Valkyrie and Lai Ren. Poor boy. I can't possibly imagine those two getting along. They don't just put up with each other. They literally complete each other. They are two hands on the same being linked together in prayer. They are so dependent on each other that should something happen to one of them, well, I shudder to think. And all that comes to a head in the finale for Volume 4. Rin is willing to throw his life away in anger against the Nuklavi. This time, it's Nora who calms him down with a slap. And oh man, all the little visual cues she gives. Holding his hand, tackling him, this shading grin. There's a reason basically no one can test this ship. So much so, I think the writers threw in those martial arts moments just to see if there was anybody who didn't ship Renora. It's almost too obvious for me to get invested. Competition breeds innovation, and the fans' outcry spikes under the same rules. Case in point... Arcos, the sunken ship. Let us plunder her remains and see if we can salvage why so many people liked it. Arcos always put me off for one reason. I've been down this road before. Thankfully, this time the road went off the rails and took an arrow to the chest. Tell me if you've heard this one before. Dorky guy putting on machismo act inexplicably earns the affections of a shy girl too good for him, but he's too oblivious to notice all the obvious signs and I'll take every anime relationship ever for 500, Alec. To its credit, it gets a tad deeper than that. It's hard to remember just how endearing Pyrrha and Jean were in Volume 2. Volume 1, not so much because Jean just sucked and everyone knows it. Pyrrha was the one person who saw Jean's flaws and took the proactive approach to help him get stronger. At first, Jean was too... You know, idiot doesn't do it justice. But over time, he did accept her help. She fell for him, not because he was cool or funny or strong, but for no other virtue than he treated her like he did everyone else, which was something Pyrrha was starving for. Just look at what few interactions she had with Weiss. Weiss was trying to take advantage of her. She had no will of her own. I could only imagine her parents being very overbearing to her. She thought her destiny was to be strong, even if it cost her her happiness. 
Even as Jean began reciprocating these feelings, she pushed him out of the way because of the maidens. He told her not to let anything get in her way, unaware that he was what was in her way. I think Jean realizes that now, that through death, Pierre was able to escape her false definition of destiny and finally achieve happiness. By her hand, she protects him as part of his weapons and armor. We don't know how he felt after the kiss, but that doesn't matter because Pyrrha is dead. Pyrrha was fated for death, but she lives on in those she gave her heart to. And hopefully, one day, Jean can move on and find happiness as well. One way this could happen is... If you want love, lower your expectations a lot. You might think your dick is a gift, I promise it's not. If Arcos is the Naruhina that can never be, White Knight is the Narusaku that no one ever wanted. White Knight is a ship with nearly zero support from the fan base. It was put into the script as an ad lib by series writer and Jean voice actor Miles Luna, but it's not completely without merits. Let me explain. Jean's whole character arc is about becoming worthy of his family's noble legacy. Weiss's motivation is about rebelling against what her father has done to the Shinee legacy and working to undo that damage. In a way, they have similar motivations. Add to that a similar reaction to Ruby's naivety. Not only that, but should White Knight happen, even if only for a single date, it would be the pinnacle of their arcs. Jean truly being worthy, even of the Ice Queen's sentiments, and Weiss being humble enough to date a dork like Jean. There's also a stigmatism that Weiss has, that everyone just wants to date her for her name. But Jean isn't like that. And when I say Jean has genuine admiration, I mean it. The scene where he talks about her to Ren is telling, and he is convincingly saddened by Weiss turning him down. So much so, he gets mad at Neptune for turning her down. And man, did Jean try really hard in Volume 2. And from the other side, the way the first dance scene is edited, it implies that the white flowers Jean dropped is the same that is wilting in the bouquet that Weiss is trying to get back up when Jean talks to Ruby. Maybe she's regretting turning Jean down. That she'd rather be with him than be... But with Rooster Teeth's penchant for fan service and the fact White Knight was meant to be a joke, it's safe to say it doesn't really have a chance. It's sad to see, though. They do look cute together, and like I said, it has a lot of similarities to Narusaku with how Naruto had such admiration for her and how she had to be won over by him over time. That's a good holding pattern for any show, but that's not what the fandom wants. What they want is... If I could fall. On one hand, White Rose is the most widespread ship with the most fan art and fan fiction. On the other hand, I just don't get it. Maybe it's my own bias showing, but I just don't see that level of connection with these two. They've gotten a lot of screen time together, but only one to three of these interactions can be seen as meaningful. That's not to say I don't understand it. Ruby is the kind of character who doesn't change and doesn't have to. She is an instrument that drives change in others. We see this most dominantly in Weiss, but also Yang through the flashback in Volume 2. This will be a common factor in Ruby-based ships, especially those not present in this video. Weiss and Ruby start off confrontational. Ruby is a dweeb who is unconfident about her appointment to Beacon, and Weiss is an arrogant brat who has had everything she ever wanted gift wrapped to her. There's a lot more physical contact with this pairing, but nothing that could be seen as romantic. It's over the top and campy for sure, but Ruby obviously wants to be her friend, and there are several moments the writers and animators put in just for the shippers, but so much of it is still argumentative. Maybe that's what the shippers like? And these shippers, my goodness the fans love White Rose. It's Probably the biggest ship just in terms of fanbase content. Over a thousand fan fictions with this ship as the main tag, some of them extremely long. There's something about this ship that resonates and inspires people, but I just don't see it. 
We'll have to wait until Volume 5 to see them reunite, but right now, this is the ship that is just friends, and even then, it's more one-sided. Not like the next ship. The key companion for White Rose is Bumblebee. I see the evidence a lot more than White Rose, but I never really bought into it. There's a lot that works in the ship. Blake's all dark and moody, Yang's all sunshine and rainbow. Yake opened up to Blake on a level she hadn't done with anyone else. Blake has an impulse to run away, Yang has an impulse to stand and fight, and there's lots of evidence of Rooster Teeth appealing to the fanbase with evidence of their feelings. Yang and Blake danced, so what? Just a friendly dance, right? Well, there's also the wink and the hug. And Yang panicking that Blake might not believe her. Oh, and the whole destroy everything you love starting with her bit. Yeah, also helps the shippers that Yang gets all torn up over a lot of stuff, but Blake is included. Honestly, I could see this going both ways, and I could definitely see Yang going both ways about Chicka Bow Wow. They could end up together, or they could just stay best friends. Even at their least romantic, Yang is the one Blake will be calling up whenever she gets in a fight with her spouse. Blake is going to be Yang's wingman when they go out to party. They're the ones who will be roommates well into adulthood. When one of them has a kid, the other will be the equivalent of Uncle Crow for that kid. That's just the way I see it. There's definitely a lot of feelings there. The question is just how romantic will those feelings become? The only thing holding me back from saying these two need to be together is competition. Namely from... Black hole sun, won't you come? There's a lot to like about this ship. Blake's all dark and moody, he's all, you know what, I could literally copy paste what this ship has going for it from the Bumblebee segment. Yang and Sun are just very similar characters. They both complement Blake's personality in the same way. The biggest difference is that Black Sun is a lot more obvious. If you're in denial, you can chalk all of Yang's scenes up to her just being friendly. But with Sun, yeah, no, that is definitely romantic. She blushes when he flirts. She opened up to him before she opened up to any of her teammates. Blake had a dance with Yang, but she had all the other dances with Sun. Even waited outside so they could walk in together. Even when she gets mad at him in Volume 4, once her motivations are revealed, it becomes clear that she holds him in the same regard as her team. Sun is her rock. In Volume 4, he's the foundation of her character arc, and it's only through his stubbornness that Blake stops running. Blake and Sun also have complementary semblances. Blake uses clones to evade damage and run. Sun uses clones to rally, aid, and attack. Blake is incapable of running from her problems when she is with him. Sun knows her well enough and is willing to hold her accountable for her actions. You know, like a healthy relationship is supposed to. Also, he's a faunist, so he's got that going for him. Oh, and it opens up a double date opportunity with... It's fitting that the only pseudo canon ship that has little to no support from the fandom is named for a natural phenomenon that famously sinks ships. I'm not the only one who noticed that, am I? For being named after something that appears in the deep, Iceberg is also the shallowest of ships. I kind of like that. Weiss and Neptune are the prom king and queen of their friends. Both of them are stylish, hot, cool, and smart. But like all prom royalty, it won't work out. I love that, not because I hate the pairing, but because having them date and break up adds a sense of realism to the otherwise fanciful show. This could very well be the most realistic relationship in the whole series. It has the potential to add genuine human drama to the fold, so long as they act like adults and not bratty teenagers. Neptune is very much the kind of guy Weiss's family would want her to be with. Granted, we know nothing about his upbringing or backstory, but I could totally see him blending in with all the Atlassian socialites. I guess another reason I like it is because Weiss just needs someone. It was heartbreaking to see her all alone at the dance, and heartwarming to see her cheer up thanks to Neptune and Jean. But, like I said, Iceberg is a short game. I reckon in the long run, Weiss will end up with someone else. For instance... If 
you want the Phantom to riot, make Freezer Burn Cannon. Not only will it upset two of the biggest ships, but it'll do so without coming off as a troll move. A key factor in whether people will ship it or not is eye candy. Do the two characters look good next to each other? Ship them! And these two look good together. But it's not just opposite body types, it's opposite personalities as well. One has an extremely warm, vibrant personality, and the other has a cold, distant personality. I've mentioned Weiss's loneliness and her family issues. What would be better for her than someone with a big sister complex? Whoever Yang ends up with is going to get showered with so much love. The loneliest people are the kindest. The saddest people are the wisest. All because they do not wish to see anyone else suffer. Weiss has family issues because she hates her father and wishes to take after her grandfather. Yang has family issues because she was abandoned by her mother, then her stepmom died, then she had to gain maturity beyond her years thanks to the need to step up for Ruby. That influence has spread to all of Team Ruby. For Weiss, she's gotten much cheerier and has even adopted Yang's sense of humor. I would love it if this turned into something more. But it's not my favorite Weiss ship. That would be... And I told about equality And it's you either you're wrong or you're right I know I'm focusing on Weiss a lot this video, but I have my reasons. I love her character a lot, and the fact that her main drive, at least of her trailer is any indication, is her solitude? A character conceived as the embodiment of loneliness is naturally going to ship well with a lot of people. But this is probably my favorite ship with her. Which saddens me because Black Sun has been done so well, and if Black Sun doesn't happen, then the writers are going to do Bumblebee. Monochrome simply does not get enough love, and I can't for the life of me figure why. I've talked about parallels and character arcs and how invested ships make people, and Monochrome has that in spades. Just look at this image. This image right here sums up why Monochrome would work. Though this parallel does lose some steam considering that Blake is also from an esteemed family and is pretty much the fondest princess, then again that may actually bolster their similarities and further highlight their differences. They were born as pawns, children in an age-old conflict. Their respective families have been at war for years, even though it wasn't actual bloodshed until Gira stepped down. The main driving force in this ship is the fact that it was the thrust of Volume 1's finale. The writers thought this dynamic was so good that they chose it to be the climax of their maiden volume. But in volume since, they haven't done much together. Although they are the only Ruby pairing to go out on a date, even if it was just a friendly trip to the Noodle Hut. Still more than what Blake has done with Yang. But even with all that said, it's not my favorite ship. And anyone who knows me knows my favorite ship in this show is... <laughs> I've always had a soft spot for Lancaster, and ever since Arcos crashed and burned, those feelings have only gotten stronger. The whole appeal of Lancaster is how natural it feels, and how much chemistry Ruby and Jean have. So much so that it would be completely likely for them to move in together and share their life without even bothering with the formality of declaring a relationship. Lancaster is the best friends become lovers type of relationship. They have a lot in common. They are both the outsiders in Beacon and question whether they even deserve to be there. They probably study together for that reason. They are also really open with each other and actually tell each other about how they feel. They are also the two characters with the clearest motivations, with the best reason to do what they do. None of the other major characters need to be huntsmen to fulfill their goals. They are both burdened by great legacies, but as Jean falters, Ruby perseveres and lifts him up, and he returns the favor when Ruby's world starts to crumble. They have both lost so much, but refuse to let each other fall into despair. Their friendship is the purest in the show. They were each other's first friends at Beacon, and despite what terrible fan fictions do with this, they never treat it like a big deal. Being together, hanging out, talking, all of that is as natural to them as walking. And given some other character dynamics, that's very impressive. They fulfill every criteria I need to support a ship. And with how much I can relate to Jean, and how much I love Ruby as a character, 
Lancaster has become my OTP. I want these two characters to keep getting stronger and closer. I don't want new characters to be introduced just to fulfill some sort of love quota. Monty's mantra was to never stop moving forward. The main theme he built the story around is optimism. That no matter how bad things get, you can't let it overcome you. These two characters, and by extension their ship, are the best examples of the writers making good on that theme. If you don't ship them, that's fine, but I will always ship them for these reasons. So those were my thoughts on 10 of the major ships in Ruby. It's not a comprehensive list, but I hope you understand where I'm coming from and what I look for in a ship. If you liked this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'd like to do this again next year with more Ruby ships. Until then, I'm Mediocrity4, happy Valentine's Day, and thanks for watching. Because love is taking that dive Then getting really comfortable and peeing in the pool And love is a real life porn Minus all the stuff that makes porn cool And love is a homeless guy Searching for treasure in the middle of the rain And finding a bag of gold coins And slowly finding out they're all filled with chocolate And even though he's heartbroken He can't complain because he was hungry in the first place